This is Matt Rausch, Technology Editor with WWJ News Radio 950. I'm here today at the Detroit Zoo with Zoo Director Ron Kagan, and uh, the zoo has a, a new educational tool here that's something really very unique, and I'd like to ask Ron about it. Ron, what, what is this uh, device that uh, behind you here, this giant globe, six-foot globe? This is Science on a Sphere. Uh, probably when people come to the zoo, they're not thinking about being an astronaut, but... If you come to see Science on a Sphere, you'll know what it's like to be a couple of thousand miles in outer space looking at the planet. This is an amazing device that both excites people about science, but also helps people understand the dynamic forces that are in the environment, whether it's uh, weather or oceans or migratory patterns of animals. This, on a global scale and in, in a very dynamic, animated way, um, is able to help you understand how things interact and, and why things happen the way they are. We have several hundred uh, data sets. This was uh, all coming to us from uh, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and NASA. And you plan to do some programming of your own on this device, right? We do. We do. We currently have several hundred data sets of all sorts of things, whether it's earthquakes or hurricanes or, or just how the oceans work and how life depends on fresh water and versus salt water. Uh, but we also will do our own programming. This is very new, uh, but we'll be doing some programming on, on very specific wildlife projects, conservation areas of concern. Uh, and, and we're able to actually tie into a network of 60 other uh, science and spheres that are around the world uh, in science centers. All right, and uh, how does the device work anyway? There, there are four projectors in the corners of the room, right? It's just basically images projected on a sphere in a certain way to make them uh, you know, represent properly on the sphere, right? Yeah, we, we um, like any magician, we don't really want to tell everybody exactly how this is done, <laughs> but uh, there's a very sophisticated computer uh, and computer algorithm which uh, essentially bends the light, sews the four images together from the four different projectors, bends it onto this uh, giant sphere so that it all looks exactly right. And we have incredible control of this. Uh, I don't know if you can see in the background, but yeah, I'm sure. gonna basically rotate uh, the oh Earth. Oh my, oh my. So we're able to uh, take a look at uh, Antarctica. We're able to stop animations. Uh, we can either use the, uh, the prepared audio or do our own, and then we can start it up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone just changed our orbit here. Yeah. Yes, and we'll also be able to do what's called sphere casting, a little bit like web casting, but we, we'll be able to develop this so that we can send it directly into schools live, we can have a, a bird curator here who's an expert in penguins talk about what's happening in Antarctica. Uh, with school children, and uh, so it's really going yeah. To I'm thinking gra really graphically good. representing migratory patterns, um, you know, documenting the effects of, of climate change on ice packs, all that sorts exactly of stuff. Right. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. And the cost of this installation, roughly? Uh, about three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars to uh, install it and, and acquire it and do the program. And and you raised funds for this, right? This is all private donations. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's terrific. And um, so it is uh, you know, could. You, People, you know, with their zoo admission, can come in and take a look and, and with some of these programs, right? See this some of these programs. Free with zoo admission, and there are always programs running. We have uh, several that are on a cycle right now, and we'll be adding more as we go forward. All right. Thanks very much, uh, Ron Kagan, director of the Detroit Zoo. This is Matt Rausch, technology editor, WWJ News Radio 950.